Today, we're finishing up our JK Wrangler with new axle shafts and locking diffs. Then, we're hitting the street <laughs> and the trails to see how well all our hard work will pay off. It's all today here on Truck Tech. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Truck Tech. Today, we are finishing up our 07 Jeep Wrangler. You guys that have been keeping up with the show know we've already swapped in a 5.7 liter Hemi and matching automatic transmission, added a three and a quarter inch lift kit from Rusty's Off-Road, big brakes at all four corners, swapped in a heavy duty Dana 44 front axle, added bumpers, winch, tire carrier, and rocker protection. And I'm in the process of swapping in gears and locking differentials. Now, once we get done with all this stuff, we get to get out of the shop for a little bit and test this thing out off-road and see how it does. But clearly, we got some labor to take care of first, so let's get this rear axle knocked out. Now, an air locker requires compressed air so it can function correctly and lock and unlock. So we've got to get compressed air to this copper feed line. That means we've got to drill and tap the axle housing so we can get that done. Now the diff and our 456 Motive gears have already been installed and set up. We've got a good contact pattern as well. All we've got to do is take care of the plumbing. Good thing this iron's fairly soft. All right, this should be close, yep. Now drilling and tapping an axle housing can seem a little intimidating, but if you take your time and just go step by step, you can get the job done right the first time. I went ahead and applied some Loctite thread sealant to the pipe threads, so it's good to go. Just good and snug is all it needs. Before disassembly, I marked the bearing caps because they need to go back in the same position. Yeah, my dots lining up with my dots. You can see here, I had to make a notch to clear, to clear the copper line. After torquing the bearing cap bolts to 85 foot-pounds, we can form the airline and trim it to length. Now to trim it, I'm using our tubing cutter. The copper O-ring is sealed to the diff housing or bulkhead fitting with this O-ring. And since the O-ring is what does the sealing, well, the fitting doesn't need to be super tight. You don't want to crush that O-ring. Snug. And with the copper line secured, you can get to work routing the airline. You want it to have plenty of room around the ring gear and keep it close to the diff housing as possible. That way it doesn't get caught up in any moving parts. All right, we're good. Now for rear axle shafts, we could reinstall the stock pieces. They'd bolt right up. And it's a decent axle shaft. It's good size diameter, 30 spline, and I'm sure it would be okay behind our Hemi powered Wrangler but we're more than likely on the ragged edge of what a stock axle shaft can take. So while we got everything apart, we're gonna take the opportunity to upgrade to these 10 factory shafts. These are 4140 chromoly axles that we picked up from Rusty's. Now they feature rolled splines and a Duracoat finish to fend off corrosion. The kit includes ABS tone rings, axle seals, bearings, and press and wheel studs. That means we got a little bit of work to do at our big old hydraulic press. The first piece to go on is the ABS tone ring. It's one of the pieces that provide the wheel speed signal to the vehicle's electronics. Now, I like to keep old bearing races just for pressing on parts like these. To press the wheel studs in, I'm using an unused shock sleeve insert. It's just a little bit longer than the wheel studs, and it does a good job of pressing the studs in good and straight. Now you can hammer these studs in, I've seen it done and I've done it myself, but they're usually not perfectly straight when you choose that method. So pressing them in or paying somebody else to is a good idea. Careful with the ABS sensor there. Now with the engine swap moving the location of our transfer case, we had to buy new drive shafts but we've showed you guys that the factory JK shafts aren't the strongest things in the world. So with a V8 under the hood and 35 inch tires, a shaft upgrade only makes sense. So a quick call to Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts netted us these polished and clear coated bad boys. 
Now, the JK drive shaft kits include flanges for both the transfer case and the axle end to replace the factory style flange. And when Tom heard we were running a V8, well, he recommended an upgrade to the 1350 series joints. When compared to the 1310 joints that normally come in these, well, you can see which one is stronger. And with those 1350s installed in these shafts, well, they're about the strongest drive shafts you can get for a JK. To get the factory transfer case flange out of the way, first we remove the retaining nut and then use our Matco two jaw puller to make quick work of it. That was easy, went under much tension. Before installing the flange, I applied a thin film of RTV to the splines and some thread locker to the retaining nut. Then we just ran it in with our impact gun. With that done, we can install the drive shaft. Now the heavy duty Chromoly inner and outer front axle shafts came from 10 Factory as well. And the kit includes quality Spicer U-joints. And after some quick assembly, well, they'll be ready for installation and they'll complete our front axle. These full circle retainers that are provided in the kit do a better job of retaining the U-joint caps than the three quarter C-clips that are often used. Under high stress situations, well, parts can move around a little bit, those C-clips can get spit out, and you have part failure. These full circle retainers go a long way in preventing that from happening. Right. Then we can install our heavy duty shafts, being careful not to damage the seal, add the hubs or wheel bearings, brakes, and that'll just about button up this front end. All right, with the diff set up, the axle shafts and the drive shafts installed, well, I'm using our Motive Products Power Fill to give our 456 Motive gears a bath in gear oil. Then all I've got to do to finish things up is install the air compressor and route the air lines. Then we'll be ready to take our Hemi powered Wrangler out and see how it does off road and maybe on the street too. After the break, we're finally getting out of the shop and hitting the trails to have a little fun. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Truck Tech. Well, we're finally out of the shop and down here at Woolies Off-Road Park, one of our favorite places to come ride. Now, if you guys remember when we were installing our lift kit, well, we had Rusty in the shop and we told you we might meet back up with him on the trail to test these things out. So that's who's behind us and it's almost brand new four door. So let's go have some fun. Now, Rusty's rig for today is this 2013 four-door, and he's rolling on 37-inch tires and one of his five and a half inch long arm kits with the RX 200 series shocks. He's also got some side protection, bumpers, and a winch, so he should be in good shape for the day. And it'll be a good comparison to our two-door JK with a three and a quarter inch advance kit on it. Now, like we mentioned, this Jeep's got Rusty's long arm suspension on it, where our Jeep has the control arms mounted in the factory locations. So he's probably gonna have a little bit more axle flex, but we've got air lockers where he's got open diffs. So it'll be interesting to compare the two going down the trail. <laughs> that works too. Now, without locking differentials, Rusty's gonna have to use a little bit more momentum to get over some of the obstacles down here at Woolies. It's basically a stock vehicle that uh, we've brought out here with just uh, our suspension kit, tires and wheels, and uh, it's performed really good. All right, you're about to fall off. Yep, keep coming. Most people uh, think a long arm kit is just for aggressive off-roading, and it's not. All right, just back up about six inches and just give it a little bump. It's just as much for highway and on-road driving as it is off-road. Don't go back far, just a little, that's good. Now just try to give it a little bump. Well, this kit, it being a three and a quarter advance, it, a lot of people don't want to do any cut or modification to the vehicle. With the long arm kit, it's a bolt on kit. There's no welding, but it does require removing the factory hanger brackets. It's a lot more adjustable than say a short arm kit. It cuts a lot of the more severe angles out of the uh, suspension to give it much better ride and handling over a short arm kit. Not for that front locker. These JKs are about five inches wider than the TJ. 
Feels like the front end's a little bit light. That might be a good time for an oil change. Convenient anyway. <laughs> now come straight at me. Here's a great example of how a locker can keep you moving forward on a trail, even with some air under one tire. The shorter two doors, a little easier to navigate. At least when moving forward. Time to look at our options here. I heard plastic crunching. Oh yeah, Rusty, uh, you sell replacement top parts? I think we got a couple of uh, victims here. Oh, you kind of broke the B-pillar post here, but it happens. Now what can you do? Well, I don't see that stump moving on its own. I'm pretty sure this, this piece here, goes here in the B-pillar, but it doesn't seem to want to stay. Stupid stump. Now we built this thing to be able to drive it to the trails, tackle some pretty aggressive terrain, and then drive back home without the assistance of a separate truck and trailer. So this is about as hardcore as we want to get, because we got to rely on this thing to get us back to the shop. I'm just worried about that corner. That's good. Yep, still running. Look at me, I'm, I'm a videographer shooting the shooter. Now the mild lift kit, locking diffs, and body armor proved to be a pretty capable combination on our two-door Wrangler. But Rusty's four-door proves that you can take a basically stock vehicle, throw a long arm kit on it and some decent tires, and it'll take you pretty far up the trail. Now instead of installing limited slips or locking diffs, vehicle manufacturers are more reliant than ever on electronic traction control. While that might be okay if you're serious about wheeling, you're gonna need a locker or two. Up next, we'll see just how well our JK behaves on pavement. Then it's back to Woolies for some more off-road fun. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to Truck Tech. Well, we're taking a break from the dirt trails of Woolies for a little bit of pavement. Now, out on the highway, this thing's doing great. We're cruising at 70, 72 miles an hour. It's running cool. There's no steering wheel shimmy or shake. Nice daily driver. This Jeep is truly a dual purpose rig. And with the Hemi under the hood, it just makes it more fun to drive every day. Now, I've done quite a few miles behind the wheel of lifted Jeeps, mostly powered by a four liter straight six. And it's a great engine. It's one of my favorites. It seemed to last forever. But having a 5.7 Hemi on the hood, well, sure makes it nice. Put that right foot down. This thing sounds good, man. This thing sounds really good. Now, like we talked about, we want to be able to use this Jeep on some pretty tough trails and out on the highway. So we didn't want to get too carried away with tire size. The more you set a vehicle up for hardcore off-road use, the less usable it is out on the open road. So we tried to find a good balance between the two. Now these 35s are riding pretty good. They do make a little bit of noise, but it's what you would expect from a mud tire. It's definitely not too bad. And like you guys saw out at Woolies, our suspension system performed well on the trails and it's riding great out on the highway. And with the selectable locking differentials front and rear, it allows this Wrangler to perform really well in both arenas. And our bare brake kit is doing a great job of slowing down our about 4,500 pound rig. Oh, that's awesome, look at that. So now that we've proved this Jeep Wrangler does great out on the pavement, Let's head back to Woolies Off-Road Park and see what we can do about a highlight reel. Yeah, and get it over. Bypass. 
least if I roll, I'm not going far. Now, all in all, today was a good day. Rusty's longer four-door Jeep did great out on the trail. I think the extra suspension flex from the long arm kit kept the tires in contact with the trail and kept him moving. I think he survived the day without any damage. Our locked up two-door Jeep performed really well too. In fact, the only damage we incurred was this flimsy piece of black plastic that goes on the B-pillar. But that's what they make parts for. It's not too expensive, no big deal. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, after a full day out on the trail testing out our 07 Jeep Wrangler, it just about puts this project to bed. And we did just about everything you can do to a Jeep to this one. We did the 5.7 Hemi swap, heavy duty front axle, gears, lockers, axle shafts, lift kit, tires, wheels, bumper, winch, rocker protection, and tire carrier. Just about everything and everything performed like it was supposed to. Now, just like always, we come prepared. We bring tools and extra fluids out here on the trail but we also packed along the extra air locker line that came in the installation kit, along with a couple of the repair unions so you can make a trail fix. If you happen to crush one of these lines on the trail or burn it on the exhaust, well, your air lockers aren't gonna work. You're gonna be stuck with open diffs, basically. So take one of these kits along, be prepared, and keep rolling on the trail. But for now, I'm gonna head back to the shop and start thinking about a new project. Now, if you want to add some functional style to your pickup truck, check out these products from Bushwhacker. These are their pocket style flares and their ultimate bed rail caps that happen to be for a late model Chevy. These pocket style flares give your truck that tough off-road ready look and add protection in the way of extra tire coverage to prevent debris from getting kicked up and damaging the paint. They install easily with no drilling in most applications and they come in an OEM matte black type finish that you can just leave just like it is or paint to match your truck. Their ultimate bed rail caps, well they couldn't be any easier to install. Some double sided tape, you're just about done. And they come in an OEM type textured finish for good looks. Both these bed rail caps and their pocket style flares are made from their proprietary UV resistant Duraflex plastic and they come with a limited lifetime warranty. Now, if you guys are getting into welding, well, you need to get into the right protective gear. And Miller's got you covered with just about everything you need. They've got men's and women's welding jackets, and they're made out of their Endura cotton, which is flame resistant and durable. They're pre-shrunk, so if it fits out of the package, it'll fit a couple of years later. This is their Digital Elite Series welding helmet. It's got easy to use digital controls, a lot of adjustability in the headgear, a big viewing area, and a three-year warranty. The respirators will keep welding fumes and dust particles out of your lungs. And their gloves, well, they've got them for TIG welding, MIG welding, and heavy duty MIG or ARC welding. Now, this is just a small sample of some of the protective gear they offer. Heck, they've got over a dozen styles in just gloves alone. They've also got safety glasses, bigger respirators, welding sleeves, you name it. If it protects you while welding, they've got you covered, literally. Guys, thanks for watching Truck Tech. See you next time.